we are back. Welcome back to Across the Board with uh, on Hawk Radio. That, that song ended a lot faster than I thought it would. Sorry about that. I was actually uh, on the phone with uh, Richard Patrick talking a, a little politics there and a little history. So, uh, again, we promised Richard Patrick live on air. And with us now, we have the man, the myth, the absolute alt-rock, modern, modern rock legend, Richard Patrick, a filter, on the line with us now. Richard, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Great. Welcome to the show. Amazing introduction. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Well, you know, I got to tell you, I'm I'm a little, uh, the term is, I think, geeked out. You know, we, I've interviewed uh, celebrities all across the world and uh, never really get starstruck, but, uh, you know, we're such huge fans of you. It's uh, I, was, I was a little shaky for this one. So, uh, but oh, we're, wow. I we're, feel honored. Yeah, cool. <laughs> we're stoked, man, I'll tell you. So uh, you're on Across the Board. Like I said, I'm E, and my co-host over here is The Colonel. And uh, we're here talking about the problem with Angels, the uh, the new album. The trouble. Trouble, trouble with I'm Angels. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, really? I told you. Already, that happened? Yeah, already nervous. You're already <laughs> geeking out. Yeah. Geeking out over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those days. What can I say? Anyway, uh, so um, we've you know we just played coming into the interview here uh, a lot of the new songs fades like a photograph, no love, drug boy, and of course the first new single was the inevitable relapse. Uh, tell us a little bit about your writing process uh, with the new album. Uh, it was uh, Bob Marley. You know the, the, the thing is is I wanna, when I did Army of Anyone, it was kind of a new thing, and you know the the DeLeo brothers are. Um, Super, the DeLeo brothers from STP are, are are like super like happy, and they live in Malibu, and they have right. there's a lot of love in their world, and so I was kind of writing like about like you know getting it right and doing something good, and you know and then you know having a family and um, you know my sobriety being like super duper, hey everything's great, you know kind of thing. And then I wrote on the other record, uh, Anthems, which is a, just a dedicated, it was just a tribute record for my friend that actually got killed in Iraq. Right. And, you know, that was very single, it was very myopic, you know, writing about that and, you know, how war's bad and just, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I sat down with Bob Marlette and he goes, hey, Rich, you know, it's, it's time to get back to, because I came to him and I said, we're going back to title of record, Amalgamite and Short Bus. Like, we, we have to, like, get back to those the, those roots. And he goes, absolutely. And he just started saying, like, you need to stop writing about now and you need to start writing about what it was like, your history. You know, I, it was amazing. When I was a kid, like, the, I didn't have any, you know, I didn't have any experiences to kind of, so I talked about Art Bud Dwyer and I talked about, like, other themes like that, but you know, now that I've kind of lived, you know, I, I could write a book on everything that I've learned, you know, in, in, in the world. And um, so, you know, he really kind of made me address all the, the, the things about drugs. Like, you know, for many years, drugs were rocked and were fun. And I, you know, everything was working on them. And, you know, and he's like, well, you know, write about that stuff. So I actually, one of the, my favorite lines from the whole thing was just this thing called, uh, uh, in Drug Boy, where I go, uh, tonight these chemicals are God, tonight these chemicals are sunlight, golden sunlight, you know. Wow. And that's, you know, that's how you feel. You're just like, I, I, nothing else matters. I When I had my first drink, I was like, I've just now found everything that's been missing is in this glass. You know, and it that's alcoholism. So as opposed to really talking about, like, you know, I, I, I beat it and I haven't had a drink in eight years. It was more of a, you know, this is who I was and, and life was hard, but, like, focus on when it was a conflict as opposed to just something that I had learned that was, you know, ultimately bad for you. Now, I have to, I mean, after listening to this album, I, I love it, and I really feel like your songwriting ability just really just stepped up, completely elevated on this album. And now that you've already told us what it's about, I feel like over the years, past couple of years, rock itself, and the genre itself, has not been able to produce the popularity it had back in the 90s. Right, suffering. And I, I really do feel like it's today's rock is lacking edge and freshness. But if I had to pick two words to describe this album, edgy and fresh are exactly what I would use. What do you think needs to be done to elevate rock music back to the stardom it was about 15 years ago? Um, well, I think the whole nation's kind of turned into 
um, I don't, you know, it's a pop world right now. I mean, uh, they're seeing Lady Gaga as edgy. You know, she's shocking. That's very true. And and it's funny because, you know, Madonna grabbed her crotch, and it was, you know, the most unbelievable thing that ever happened to music videos. And, you know, a girl grabbing her crotch, you know, look out. (laughs) Right. And, uh... Now Justin Bieber's grabbing his cry. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you know, some ten-year-old. You know. So uh, you don't, you don't think that Drug Boy will get covered on uh, on Glee? I don't think so. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know, and that's the thing. I mean, I I, I think that um, I think that guys like you know, um, Avenged Sevenfold and and those guys are uh, are definitely you know are definitely still rocking and, and bringing in large crowds and Absolutely. disturbed and stuff like that but they're actually joining the club of we're you know we're metal so you know as long as you as long as you fit the criteria and wear dark clothes and you know blah 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 so it's it's hard for a, it's hard for a band like filter where we 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 I don't want to be in a genre. I don't want to have to wear. I don't want to have to put a six 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 somewhere on my, you know, on my on my drum head. You right. Know? right. And I, I I don't want. And I don't. I love metal. Pantera is probably one of my most favorite bands ever, and I love the Deftones. And I. But we're more like a Deftones. We're more like a, um, you know, just a band that's Soundgarden or or something that was an alternative to the hair metal that was being right. rammed down our throats by MTV at the same time. That's where Trent and I, like, met, you know, was, like, in that era, and it was like, God, I can't take this, this, this... Garbage. This, you know, this, this you know, this, this, the crap that's on, you know, yeah. the radio 24 hours a day, and then as soon as Nirvana, and as soon as James Day, as soon as we did Lollapalooza, it was like there was a change in the air. And they all switched it over, and it was finally... We had our our thing, but you know those things, and you know you get that to a certain degree with like the Strokes. They, you know, the Strokes. I were, see that. Were definitely um, a change, and they created that whole independent kind of vibe. Um, but it is even even it's still kind of almost like a happy. You know, there's a happiness out there. Um, I don't know, man. It's sad. I I I miss the '90s, but at the same time. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm a current player in today's music world. So for me, when I hear, you know, no love, you know, I, I hate my music. You know, there's so many, there's so many, when you're, when you're writing, it's a, you know, sometimes it's like, you just can't even like, you've got to work so hard to, to blow your own mind. Right. And to be able to like, for me to finally just go like, wow, that's really cool. I'm glad I did that song. No love. And to see it kind of taking off a little bit, and kind of getting, you know, we're we're on an independent label, so for us, you know, we're up against, you know, all these other, you know, rock bands that have tons of resources and all these massive, you know, record contracts and everything like that. And for us to be getting the kind of attention that we're starting to get from that song, I'm, I'm actually really proud of it. Now, you're, uh, obviously, you talked about uh, when you were a touring guitarist with Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor's group. Um, you're a, such a multifaceted artist. How did you grow into that? You know, you, I guess you took guitar lessons when you were young, or, or, you know, how did you become so so varied? Just winged it, you know. Just, really? Uh, just, just, just wanted it to work. I mean, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, music appreciation is really where it all starts. Like, just loving music more than the next guy. You're like, you know, and really... And then you're like, well, I want to play the guitar. You know, right around eight or nine, I was like, well, that guitar looks cool. You know, and I can see it within my son right now. He he just has this attraction to the guitar. And then it turns into, wow, I love playing chords on this thing, and I love doing... What's this do? And, you know, you, you park your guitar right up against your amp, and you create feedback, and you're like, whoa, what is that? You know, and... <laughs> You know, I I don't know. Some people, you know, want to get into mathematics to study, you know, uh, astrophysics. You know, some people want to, you know, some people are okay with just hanging out and partying and, 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 and working at Taco Bell or, or you know, like, uh, you know, they're okay with that. You know, and I just was, I was not okay unless I was 
working in music and working on songs and working and trying to create the ultimate song. Now, speaking of uh, speaking of creating new sounds, uh, I read in another interview that you actually, in Absentee Father, you were just kind of a you know a, a, a big flip off to the uh, music industry and, and the sound and what it's become, and you actually took a guitar and a screwdriver and ripped the strings off of it and recorded that as your guitar solo I, on that song. Well, yeah, I had a screwdriver. I didn't rip the strings off. I just I just molested the guitar with the screwdriver. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it was almost like a a punishment rape of the of the <laughs> of the guitar. I just you know I, I believe you know that you know, uh, you know, some of the greatest pieces of art out there, like Pollock, you know, the, 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 the splatter paintings. And I, I think it's great to do, to be an amazing technician when it comes to, you know, it's great to be a really well-rounded musician, um, or someone who's almost like perfect. And I think that's great. But I kind of lean towards like what Kurt Cobain and what, you know, Joe, Joe Strummer was about. You know, and I was I was wondering like because people say you know we're we're so diverse in our musical sound and I and I I never got this until lately but I was raised on the Clash. My brother Robert took all my Kiss records and all that stuff and he said yeah 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 <laughs> here's the Clash here's the Sex Pistols right you know real real punk rock here's 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 flipping off the man check that right. out so. You know, my guys actually, you know, you know, I think feedback and 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 kind of a non-approach, a non-technical approach to music is really important. That's what Skinny Puppy is. There's so much mayhem; it's almost unlistenable. But you know what? It, it worked. You know what I mean? It it that Skinny Puppy was the thing that actually started Nine, Nine Inch Nails' brains, like Trent. Trent, went, Trent and I, he was in the Exotic Birds, and I was in this, like, this Cure kind of u 2 e you know, Smiths kind of band, the right. act. And he and we were, I was a little kid. He was, like, 20. And, you know, I was, like, 18 or something. And he's like, you got to listen to Ministry, and you got to check out this, like, you know, this Ministry Twitch record. Well, I didn't get the Ministry Twitch record, but when I heard Land of Rape and Honey, I was like, now I get it's it. It's a great album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's when... That's when, and I was the guy in Nine Inch Nails going, dude, lose the pink in the record cover. Right. Lose the pink. Don't put pink in the record. Don't wear acid wash jeans. <laughs> right. Don't, Ever. Like, let's get darker and meaner. Like he's, and Trent was always like, yeah, but we got to have that pop element. We got to be able to cross, to, to kind of cross over. And I was like, all right, but put head like a hole first, and use the Adrian Sherwood mix of, of down in it. Yeah, and that you was know. the last album that uh, featured Pink on the album cover. Actually, Pretty Hate Machine. Yeah, the the, the actual new one. Is actually, I think they took it off. But nice. the original, original it was like Pink and Purple and. Yeah, yeah, I have that. I have the physical CD at home. Yeah. Oh, and I was always that guy, and then all of a sudden, you know, we blew up, but it turned into like you know, I was living at home, and he was living into the, in the Sharon Tate mansion, which we picked out, but like I. I I wasn't allowed to stay there or anything. So, uh, but but he it, it was amazing because I came out and then he had written this thing called um, "Happiness and Slavery" and it was the with Bob. Uh, I can't remember his name. Bob uh, London or something. Bob Flanagan. Okay. And the guy's dicks getting wailed on by a machine, and then we did Wish, and it was quite a bit darker. And as on the credits, it, it says. I would like to thank my live band for inspiring this, you know, being an inspiration behind this. Because we were the guys going, dude, you know, you, you got to make it mean, you got to make it heavy. We're, we're, you know, you know, you've got the accessibility within your songwriting. Let's make it. Let's keep that. And the mystique has never left. And I'm not saying I was the only guy that was, you know, sitting there saying, "Let's be dark," but like it was. You know, I mean, he even listed it on the label, on the record, and that and the sound never went anything as as poppy and as and as gettable as as Pretty Hate Machine. Yeah, they never looked back and and got better from there. And it, it 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 just kind of it kind of hit that level, and then the downward spiral, which was you know a great record. That's when I split, and I was like, you know what, 
I, I, I don't want to live in my mom and dad's basement, and I don't. <laughs> I, I need to do something more with my life. And I, it's 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 great to kind of do a couple of tours, and then then you start you start realizing like, well, what else is there in this band? And you know, I offered, hey man, I shot to Trent, and he was like, well, you know, uh, I like the riff, but I want to change this and I want to do that, and I was like, ooh. I don't know about that. Yeah. And so I heard him starting to suggest like tearing it apart and rebuilding it, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know." And so, you know, I, I showed it to some record company people that I had met uh, on Lollapalooza. <clears throat> I'd met my uh, well, I, uh, the, Richard Bishop introduced me to some people. He ended up managing me, and I played him. Hey, man, they shot, and they were like, "We're going to give you a record contract right now." And I was like, great. Yeah, it's that kind of song. It, it gets you immediately. Yeah. And so they, you know, I when I when I split, it was very awkward because, uh, you know, it, it seems like it's a, Trent takes it, took it almost like it was a personal attack or something. But it was like, dude, I just can't be around this anymore. I want to do my own thing. Right. And, you know, as soon as it went, you know, gold and platinum and everything worked out, I think it was, you know, it was obviously the right decision. But, that, you know, it was scary times, you know, that... You knew that Trent was going to be working on some really great stuff, and you knew that that, that the nails had been, um, that you know they were poised to to really take over the world, and and they did. They did a great job, and uh, you know I'm proud of being in that band. I had a lot of fun with it. Now I have to ask you: you've you've done a lot of cl- collaborations over the years. Uh, you've done things with Crystal Method and numerous West Borland, lots of people, the Delay Brothers. Army of anyone, yeah. Who have you worked with that's really had the biggest impact on your music, and who have you yet to work with that you really, really just would not, you just can't stand it, that you can't, you haven't done anything with them yet? Um, I, uh, well, the biggest impact is, is Bob Marlette. Bob right. Marlette is the, is the, is like the last guy I, I, I feel like I want to work with. Like, he, he really, you come in with an idea, he, 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 he sees what you're going for, and then he puts the finishing touches all over it and, and kind of helps you through things. He's got this amazing ability to like just help you get from one part to another, you know. And, you know, No Love, it was really weird. You know, Mitch had written this really great verse, and he had written this really cool, what he thought was a chorus, and then we had this riff. You know, and then Bob goes, wait a minute, you're not getting from these two. You got to build this whole thing. So he actually wrote the, the chord progression and the melody to, um, the, you know, uh, you know, Dad, we've got crossed a million lines, you know, that part. And, you know, I wrote the lyrics and it was just. It was just, and then he's like, okay, Richard, we got the, the music and the melody. And I'm like, man, that was amazing. He's like, all right, let's write lyrics. And I was like, okay. And he goes, I'm not really good with words, so you do it. <laughs> you know, and I just sat there and I went out onto his, he has this like house with this big, huge yard and all this, you know, this pool and all this stuff. And he's walking around his house with a cigar on the outside of his house. And he's got this hose and he's, 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 you know, he's watering all these plants. And he's just wandering around, and he, and he saw that I wasn't working, and I was just kind of thinking, and he goes, Why is there no love, Richard? Ah. Why is there no love, Richard? What are you talking about, Rich? What happened to you 20 years ago? What did you learn from it? What happened to you? You know, and, and, and it was just like I sat there and wrote these lyrics, and it was a paragraph of lyrics because... You know, that's something he said. He's like, you know, you, you know, you can't just do four syllable, you know, big huge choruses like "Hey Man, Nice Shot." That was another thing that I had kind of, you know, had an issue with on the last, you know, the last two things that I had done. He's like, you need more information. The kids want to know more. They want to hear more. You know, he's like, you guys, you, you have to understand how the younger people are doing it these days. They've got a an iPod out of one hand, they've got a, you know, they're playing video games with their left foot, they've yeah. got a, you know, they're multitasking and they want as much informati- information as they can, so pack in the words, pack in the syllables. Yeah, absolutely, and you and said... I was just like, you know, I was wondering, like, you know, should I do that? And he was like, dude, just do it, you know, see how it sounds. 
And then as soon as I realized what we we had done, it was we made this like contemporary song, but we put filter like all over it. So it was this kind of you know the, you know there's the, you know the, the some of the newer bands out there, some of the younger bands, they're just like pop 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 pop. So like you know, be inspired by that. Don't don't lift it or rip it off, but be inspired by that. And so he just opened my eyes to so many things that I, you know, I guess I, I, I guess I needed to see. And the other thing is, is the whole thing was done at his house. And it was just, you know, we did the drums, we got everything done. And then we did the drums in two days at Henson, which is a really great place to work at, pulled it back, put it all in the hard drive, went back to his house. And he's got this like, he's got this shack with just a million different amplifiers in it. And, um, you know, and then all the heads are inside, so you, you adjust the heads and, and the amps all change outside the house so you don't have to hear anything super loud, but it's cranked, so it sounds great. Sweet. You know, and it's just like, man, this is just, I was just like, this is just how I'm going to make the rest of my music from now on. I And I include him on everything I get. Like when we do soundtracks and stuff or when we get offered anything, I'm like, Bob, you want to do this with me? And he's always, he's you know, he's, he pushes people out of the way to work with me. I love it, and and I, you know, I I uh, I really owe if you know if we continue with the, the success that we've had with this record. I mean, it's just going to be a great, it's just going to be so easy to go back and do another one quickly because you know that's the other thing I've learned. I you know I can't take three or four years to do a record. I can just I have to get it done faster because I want my audience. I owe my audience, man. My, my, the, the, you know, the fans that have been there for 10 years waiting for me to get my crap together, what with my own personal, you know, health issues to Army of Anyone to, you know, all the other stuff I do. It's like, I owe you guys a lot of music and I want to make it up to you. You know what I mean? Well, you can definitely check it out if you want to get the new album. It's The Trouble with Angels. Find it in the stores. You can find fish, uh, find the official filter website at officialfilter.com. And actually try to pick up the physical album instead of just buying the MP3s. Yeah, it has the, the pop-up and, you know, is the angel drowning or is she swimming and uh, a yeah. really cool poster, all kinds of stuff included in it. Yeah, and I, I you know, and the funny thing is, is like, you know, I've got an iPhone and a computer and a video game and a thing to me so i i get i get where you guys are coming from you young rascals <laughs> we're, we're not quite as we're young not, as the students no, here no, but yeah pretty, yeah no. it's, it's amazing to see them uh you're, you're right they're you know on twitter and facebook and you know everything you know, at the same time study though i saw this whole thing on, on 60 minutes they actually did a study or no it was on frontline do you ever watch frontline yeah absolutely i love that i love that they actually did a study that if you do you know, they had a kid that was working on his computer, doing his homework on his computer. He had his cell phone that he was using to, to organize this social thing, and he was trying to work on his, uh, you know, so all at the same time. And they found out that you really don't get it all done. It's, it's, you, if, you, if, you, if you're reading something and you don't just sit there and read, you're not going to remember what you're reading. Yeah, they say multitasking makes you less efficient, absolutely. Yeah, they say multitasking really doesn't work. Again, this is across the board with Ian the Colonel. I know we're running a couple minutes over into the next show, but again, we have Richard Patrick on the phone, so when you have him on the phone, you stick with it a little while. Uh, I actually can make my answers more concise. Oh, no, no you're good. Listen, if we could have you talk for eight hours, we'd do that, believe me, I'll tell you. Well, uh, believe me, if you put enough coffee in me, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> we'll have to do a follow-up on this then, for sure. Uh, before we let you go, Richard, um, I was going to ask you if you would just do a quick drop for us. Again, the show is called Across the Board. Uh, so if, uh, you know, whatever you wanted to say, you know, this is Richard Powell, you could sing it, you could scream it, you could say it, whatever you want. Uh, we're going to record this and uh, keep it for a drop. All right. Yeah! This is Richard Patrick from Filter. You're listening to Across the Board. Beautiful, <laughs> man. Awesome. I appreciate it. Richard, uh, we're going to let you actually hang on the line one second. I'm going to talk to you right when we get off here. We're getting out of here. We are running over. We are actually going to play a band. Uh, Richard Patrick was in. Nine Inch Nails are going to play some down in it as we go out here. And uh, we will see you guys next Wednesday, 2 to 4. This is. Catch the replay on Friday, 6 o'clock. You'll hear this interview again then. This is Across the Board on Hawk Radio. HawkRadio.org.